um, grounding electrode system, 250, I'm sorry, 690.47. Quick little conversation here. The way it was before we had people on the panel four, and it wasn't panel four before, it was panel what? 13. 13. 13. Yeah. And panel 13 was 225 outside feeders and branch circuits, mm -hmm. 230, which is going to be services, and then uh, 690. Right. And then we had people that were not PV guys on this panel writing all kinds of things. And, or they had guys that were 690 guys writing rules on 690 and panel 13 didn't know what it was. They just, whatever it was. And it was a great big mess. And there was this thinking for whatever reason, and I've been battling this thing for almost 45, 50 years about grounding. And people wanted, they thought this is a separately dry system and they wanted to ground and do all kinds of crazy things. So we have this carryover thought process that you have to do something unique and special or treat it like a separately dry system and do all this kind of grounding. The seven, and I've been fighting this since the word go, since the 2014 code. The way it's gotten now, it's almost really, really good. And here's what it says. All you have to do Where's my equipment grounding conductor? Let's go here. A building or structure supporting a PV system must utilize a grounding electrode system and installed in accordance with part three of article 250. So we are gonna ultimately connect to the grounding electrode system. So we do need to have a grounding electrode system there. Like, okay, got that. Now the way, and I'm gonna just reduce the, the work here. The way we do this is we're going to have the array, all the circuits, all the metal parts. Everything is bonded together. And when they're all bonded together, they will be bonded to the service disconnecting means. And the service disconnecting means will be grounded, which means we're done. We don't do anything. There's nothing to do at all. So let's get into the language. Functionally grounded PV systems. This is the PV systems that we are using. And, and correct me, Bill, if I'm wrong about that. I did not get into 69041 or 69042 because I didn't want to get into that. Bill, how would I know if I, the average person installing in microinverters doing what we see every single day, those are, they, they, they call them now functionally grounded systems. If it were any other, do I know that this is a functionally grounded system? Can I look at the inverter? I mean, how do I know what my system is? Yeah, I think from a from a layman's point of view, or even you know just a technician's point of view, that is the only type of system that's being installed right now in the in general usage, except for in very large uh, power plants. Okay, all right. So we're having functionally grounded systems, and here's what it says now: functionally grounded PV systems are grounded to the building grounding electrode system when the PV output. AC circuit equipment grounding conductor terminates the distribution equipment. We're done. You have to bring, now watch this. You have to go from the distribution equipment, you have to go to the inverter, which means you have to bring an equipment grounding conductor out there with the phase conductors, right, with the circuit conductors and the neutral. You have to bring an equipment grounding conductor. Well, this saying, well, listen, looking at the other side, well, from the DC side, if you have an equipment grounding conductor connected to distribution equipment, that takes care of the grounding. Actually, it's really bonding, but yeah. well, you can say it's grounded too, Mike, because if it's connected by bonding, yeah. well, then right. service is connected to the grounding, but right. it's, it's grounded. Okay, fine. And fine. You, and we're good with that. There's nothing to do. That takes care of it right there because all these metal parts are bonded together, connected with the equipment grounding conductor to the enclosure, to the distribution equipment, which ultimately is going to be connected to the earth. Everything is grounded. And by the way, what we want to do is this in a building. We want to make sure everything above ground is all bonded together. We want to make sure all electrodes in the earth are bonded together. And we want to make sure we run one wire, run one wire from all the metal parts above, grounding electric conductor to the electrode. That way you're referencing the earth at one point. We don't want to have a ground rod connected somewhere else to equipment, to an array, and then have a ground rod connected to equipment here and now have multiple points to the earth because now there's a difference potential that's possible. So we bond it together. Run your circuits like you normally run, and there's nothing else to do. Then, the PV output circuit equipment grounding conductor, this is amazing, is the only connection to ground required by the PV system. And the reason we have that, I mean, what a strange, there aren't many code sections in a code that try to tell you something. And this is just trying to tell you 
Like there are rules in, uh, in, in 250 that says that the burial depth requirements of 300 at 5 do not apply to the grounding electroconductor that's buried. Well, why would you say that 300 at 5 doesn't apply to the to the buried grounding electroconductors? Well, because people say, well, you have wires under the ground. You got to go to 300 at 5. You got to get buried up. But, but why are they saying that? Well, because every code cycle, somebody keeps submitting a, a rule to require something that the panel doesn't want, and they reject it. They finally give up rejecting it. They say, you know what? We're just simply going to write a rule telling you what we've been trying to tell these other guys for all these code cycles so we don't keep getting the public inputs about changing it. So now we have a rule that's telling you that there is no burial depth requirements can, requirement for the grounding electroconductor. Well, 690 guys did the same thing. They say, okay, you know what? People think we're supposed to do all this kind of crazy grounding and bonding. We're not saying not to do it. We're just simply saying the required grounding is to be done one time and that's the distribution equipment connection to the equipment grounding conductor to the PV system we're done that's the only thing that is required and it's in the code that was probably my favorite code section that was added in all the code rules now but you know what you had people that want to drive ground rods well you have to have provisions in the code to allow somebody to do something if they want to do it so this rule is very similar to have, uh, I think it's 600 at 14 signs. Some people want to drive a ground rod at a sign. It's 614 says, hey, listen, you want, to, you want to put a ground rod at a sign? Well, then go to 250, that 54, put an auxiliary electrode. It doesn't really matter. I'm not really happy completely with the language in, in 69047B. I'm going to make a public input of change, but it's basically the same thing. And here's what they're saying. They're saying, look. Additional grounding electrodes are permitted. So the code is recognized. If you want to put another electrode out there and you want to connect it to the array, not really a good idea because now you have the array connected to one point and then you have it connected with an equipment grounding conductor to another point. It's not a violation of code. It's not a good idea. This rule is saying additional electrodes are permitted per 250.54 because that rule talks about auxiliary electrodes to be directly connected to the PV module frame or support structure so yes you can it's not required because the only connection that's required is in 47 a1 so you can do this and then it goes on and says hey you know what you're mounting these ground mounted arrays um you know when you auger that thing or however you put that in the ground if it complies with 250 52 and you want to have an, a, an additional electro you want to well, okay, well, now your arrays and the support structures, metal frames are all connected together and they're connected to the earth, which they automatically are anyhow. <laughs> Nothing you can do about that. And it's saying that's okay to do that. And then the last thing of uh, 69057B says, the arrays mounted to buildings can use a metal frame of the building structure as a grounding electric conductor where the requirements of 60, 250-68C2 are met. What this is saying is that if you want to put an array on a building and the building has a metal frame structure, then you could, if you wanted to, I want to do something more than just the equipment grounding conductor, then you could have the array have a wire run over to the structural frame of the building, use the frame of the building as a grounding electrode conductor, and then somewhere you can take that steel and connect it to an electrode if that's something that you want to do, though it's not required. The code recognizes that.